and welcome back to our channel. Mm -hmm. I'm Rachel. I'm Nikki and we're the Stitch Sisters. Today's video is another one of our top 10 tips. So if you've not watched it already, click on the link above to take you to our last top 10 tips. And these are all about tricky fabrics. So the yeah. last one was all about pleather, how to sew with pleather, mm -hmm. uh, vinyl, um, oil, cloth. oil cloth, all of those tricky fabrics. Sticky, Sticky heavy weight yes. stuff. Yes. This one we're going to be talking about jersey, but not just any jersey. No, no Ponte Roma here. No. We're talking about that fine t shirt jersey, the slinky, slinky Diablo, the curls at the edges, you t -shirt, wear lightweight t shirt jerseys, viscose <laughs> jerseys, all those ones that make you either want to run away and hide and never use them. <laughs> Yeah. or make you swear a lot whilst yes. you're sewing with them. So we're going to give you our top 10 tips to help you sew with those more tricky jersey fabrics. And you these can do are it. all tips for sewing on a normal sewing machine. Yes. So we know an overlocker makes things a whole lot easier for everyone, but not everyone has one. Not everyone and has also, one. sometimes, you don't. Um, you need a bit more control. You've got yeah. a pattern that needs you to get uh, get into those tricky corners and mm. things that an overlocker's not going to allow you to do. So yeah. these are all for a machine. But before we get into it, let's just remind you if you could subscribe to our channel, that would be fun. Oh, we yes. know most of you do already, but yes. for those of you that don't, do you? And do the little bell, and that means you'll get notifications. And also, we're going to pop all this information over on the blog. So that's www.thestitchsisters.co.uk, and then it's easily accessible for you. You can bookmark it and things like that for when yes. you're doing your journey. It might not go up there straight away, so it might not be up there as soon as you finish watching this, but that's all the more reason to subscribe to our <laughs> newsletter if you go on the blog and what you want is not there make sure you subscribe and we'll make yes. sure you get notified when new posts go live absolutely so let's get into it shall we so our top tip <laughs> number that was, one that was battles that, that was we're not wrong, battling we're, not battling. we're on the same team we're <laughs> on the same team we're all working to make the jersey easy to sew yes, we're battling the jersey <laughs> battling the jersey or not if you follow yes, our tips absolutely so number one I think this is really important and it might sound really simple mm. but a lot of people don't think about it sometimes so number one is to match your pattern to your fabric and right. by that we simply mean that if you have got a fabric that is particularly difficult to work with if mm -hmm. it's really slinky and drapey and fluid and it's going to constantly fall away from your machine and stretch and do all those lovely things then don't use that fabric to sew a complex pattern no. you want to be looking for a pattern that has as few seams and details as possible mm. so avoid things with bust darts and mm. avoid or any kind of darts avoid unnecessary construction seams because the fewer seams, seams that you have to mm. sew then the easier it's going to be with that fabric yes if you've got a pattern that you love and you really want to make it out of jersey then and it's really complex or it's got extra seams in it then that's when you pick a stable jersey yes so pick something like a cotton spandex or an interlock or a ponte roma or something mm. that's going to make it really easy for you mm -hmm. but if you've got a tricky one yeah then make sure it's an easy pattern in fact the Ogden cami that I'm wearing right now is a perfect example of that yes because you've literally got your facings front mm -hmm. and back you've got your main piece front and back and you've got your two straps there are so few uh, seams yes and this one that I've got on hasn't even been hemmed I like it with a raw edge mm -hmm. so. absolutely even easier yes Perfect. So talking about raw edges, we are also talking about cutting now. So the number two is using a rotary cutter and pattern weights to cut your pieces out. Trying to cut these slinky jerseys with scissors is just you, you'll end up looking like the dog's been at it to be honest <laughs> speak of the so, devil <laughs> speak of the devil sorry if she's barking but uh, use your rotary cutter you'll get a much cleaner cut you'll get a much more accurate cut as well and if you're using your rotary cutter and you have that nice clean edge that also means if your fabric doesn't fray you don't need to hem it absolutely there are lots and lots of high street stores who are doing raw edged jersey as yeah. tops as finished articles of tops Perfectly they're doing acceptable. it you're allowed to absolutely so go for it yes. so leave and your hems raw and just do as little as possible yes absolutely on that subject make sure it's a new blade especially oh, yes. if it's a tricky fabric they really struggle to cut through elastane fibers if they're yeah. not really sharp so if you know it's a tricky one get mm. a fresh blade in before you um, even and start. lots of pattern weights and what i like to do once i've gone around the pattern i then before i move anything i peel away the extra fabric so mm. that fabric that's, that's left good, 
yeah, yeah. and just peel that away around yeah. the edge before I then move it just the keeps your piece, piece completely flat yeah. yeah and you can make sure if you've got any little fibers which are still attached you can go around to the rosti cutter and cut them as well so mm -hmm. that's another good tip yes excellent so number three mm -hmm. is all about those curly edges now you know what I mean <sighs> don't you those curly edges that the second you cut it especially if you give it any kind of stretch at all it just starts to creep up on you <laughs> and you just know in that moment this one is going to be tricky yeah it's just all that time spent trying to uncurl the edge just to sew a basic seam together and you've got them mm. both curling in opposite directions and then you've got to get them flat so that you can pin yeah. them get them under the foot get them sewn trying to put a band on when you've got four edges yes her. exactly <laughs> trying to follow a seam allowance guide when yeah. it's curling away and you can't see exactly yeah. how much room you've got so our what top do do? tip for that is to use some starch mm. so you don't need to starch the whole piece you just starch those areas that you're going to be sewing mm. spray a bit of starch iron them and if you've got a polyester or viscose jersey or something that isn't doesn't seem to be happy iron being ironed then just use a press cloth yeah. but the heat will help set the starch and obviously it will wash out in fact even once you scrunch it it will start to sort of Come loosen away. up a little bit yeah and um, so it would just mean that it's stable enough for those edges for the short term so yes get some starch yes you can get it in any supermarket it's in the laundry aisle all with the color catchers yeah. and vanish and stuff like that so that's where it is yes next up is all about pinning so once you've cut it mm -hmm. And once you start your edges, you're then going to start pinning the pieces together. Now, ordinary pins, even fine flower head quilting pins, will fall out of slinky slinky jersey. So you need to get some special pins for it. And this is the kind of thing you may not use them all the time, but the entomology pins by Merchant and Mills. They're our favourites. They're, they're our favourite pins. There are others, but you're looking for a really fine caliber pin. The the smaller the shaft, the better. The those are more likely to stay in your piece than, yes. than ordinary pins. Yeah. The other reason we love the Merchant and Mills ones, the mm. entomology pins, is because they're enamel, they're black enamel, yeah. um, and enamel just has slightly more of a grip on it, so just find that yeah. they hold the fabric they, a little bit They better. seem to stay in a little bit. They're yes. less shiny, so they're less likely to be falling out of your feet as you're moving the piece around. Yes. So the finer the pins, the better. Um, sometimes we recommend using clips, but we wouldn't with this kind of jersey because they would just put too much weight on that the seam. The clips would stretch they the They would fabric. stretch the whole yeah. thing out. So you need to pin it. Um, so having some fine pins is the best way to go, go forward. If you don't have fine pins and you really are struggling, you can always tack it by hand. I know mm. that that takes a lot of time and we don't do it very often, no. to be honest. But if you're working with something really tricky and you want it to mm. be perfect, um, yeah. then you can always just tack the seam by hand first. Mm. And then you don't need to worry anyway, about pins. Anyway, everyone loves buying pins. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So the next one <laughs> after pins, number five, is actually needles. Now we know that you know that if you're sewing with jersey, you need a ballpoint or mm -hmm. you need a stretch needle. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. Yes. Um, and if you didn't know, if you're using a twin needle, that should be ballpoint too. So right. if you're sewing with knits, make sure they're ballpoint or stretch needles. Uh huh. But what you might not realize is that the size of the needle is relative to the size of your fabric. Okay. So just like with hand sewing, you choose your needle size based on the size of the thread that you're using mm -hmm. and the size of the stitches that you want to do and the weight of the fabric. Mm -hmm. It's the same with your fabrics. So the thinner the fabric, the lighter the fabric, um, the slinkier the fabric, <laughs> the thinner the needle that you will want. Right. So to give you an idea, uh, prim jersey needles come in a range of different sizes and in there you'll get 70s, 80s and 90s. 70s are perfect for Diablo slinky, really, really thin viscose jerseys. Yes. 80s are perfect for standard viscose jerseys or t-shirt jerseys that are really lightweight mm -hmm. um, and then your your 90s is what you would use for your Pontiroma and your scuba right. and your things that are a little bit more stable and easy to sew. Yes. So if you've got jersey or ballpoint needles in your stash but they're all 90s then mm -hmm. you should definitely invest in some 70s or 80s because they're definitely better for, for the, the lighter, the lighter trickier yes. fabric. And always put a new needle in especially when you're working with tricky fabric it'll always sew better with yeah. a brand new sharp needle yes absolutely 
Right, what's number six? Number six is my favourite, <laughs> which is the walking foot. So the walking foot or the dual feed foot is mm -hmm. sometimes called. And this is tends to be uh, associated with quilters, but it is great for any kind of tricky fabric. It just moves the fabric through with much more control. It stops it getting kind of dragged through and the two layers moving at different speeds and just has a lot more control over the mm -hmm. fabric. So yeah. it's definitely, it's an investment. Um, a, a, a brother one or a Janome one will cost about 30 to 40 pounds but all the sewing that you can do with it, it has so many different Absolutely. functions. Uh, so it's great for all kinds of quilting, but it's also great for a lot of dressmaking. So yes. it's definitely worth having And there one. are generic ones out there for as little yeah. as 10. So, you know, you could always try with one of those and then upgrade to one, a branded one later on. fancy one if you if want you one. If you think you need yeah. to. Yes, if you yes. use it a lot, then it's worth getting a proper one for your yes. machines. Absolutely. So number seven is one of my favorite things, and mm -hmm. that is fusible interfacing cut into strips. So I believe that Violene have now released a product that is actually knit interfacing that is in one inch strips or they wow. might be three quarter inch strips yeah. or something like that on a roll. I'm sure in terms of economies it probably works out cheaper to do your own. Probably. So what I do is I buy a meter of knit interfacing and then I just slash it into. I usually go for one inch strips because I like them to be a little bit wider, gives yeah. me a few more options. Um, but what you want to do is you want to cut them two different ways. So you want some that stretch and you want some uh -huh. that are cut on the cross grain so that they don't stretch and mm -hmm. the reason that you want to do that is because if you're using it as stay tape so let's say you want to stabilize some shoulders or yes. something in a, in a jersey top that you're making you don't want that area to stretch the whole point of it is to stop it from stretching of course yes that's where you'd use the non-stretch side but the fact that it stretches the other way will still allow movement in the mm -hmm. top as you're wearing it mm -hmm. and if you're just sewing a standard side seam or you're trying to do a hem on a really really curly edge or something like that mm -hmm. then you can use the stretchy side and just literally you could you could take the outline of your top and you could put fusible interfacing all around all the, the way border around. and then yes. sew it together and have no trouble at all yes Another option, if you don't use that and you don't want the hassle, another product that I love is a wash away tape, wonder tape sometimes it's called. Okay. Um, and that's a double sided sticky tape that does the same thing, stabilizes your edges. It's brilliant for hem, because it's double sided, it's brilliant for hems, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, you could use it to stick seams together before you sew them, um, but the good thing about it is it disintegrates when you wash it for the first time. Okay. So that's another option we'll put links to lots of these products underneath so go ahead and have a look there or check them out on the blog as yes, well yes we'll put links there too uh number eight yes uh, is a little trick that we discovered quite recently and it was one of those genius moments where we thought why have we never been doing this before i haven't and, uh, have you I've been you've doing just it never told years. anyone i, I just realize. said it in class one day and everyone thought i was some <laughs> sort of genius and i was like no, not everyone was doing this no. <laughs> So when you're starting to sew at the beginning of a seam with that really slinky jersey, if you've ever had your machine eat your jersey, so the first few we stitches are just basically your machine ramming the jersey <laughs> down into the gubbins of the machine, this will stop it from happening. So what you need to do is grab the tails off your thread from your needle and your bobbin and hold them out quite strongly at the back and then start your stitching and those first couple of stitches it would just mean that the whole fabric is being held away from the machine it's going to stop it from eating it yes and then you can go ahead and continue sewing. obviously you can't stop pulling until your needle is down in the fabric otherwise it's yep. just going to be pulling your thread through the machine whether your foot is down or not so yes. make sure you put your needle down or you do your first stitch before you start pulling yeah um, but that and usually hold on stops it, it. Yes. if it doesn't Tissue paper yes. is another option. Keep a couple of little squares of small squares of tissue paper, just a couple of inches is fine, yeah. because it's just those first few stitches that you're trying to get the machine past before mm. it's in a more stable position. Mm. Absolutely. So when you use tissue paper to stabilize seams, you then got to tear it away. Obviously the stitches create a perforation and that does make it easier to do. Yeah. You do end up with a little bit little of bits. tissue paper in. 
So to avoid you having to get the tweezers out and do the whole seam, just the first couple of inches but is then fine. Tissue paper would come out in the wash anyway. It would disintegrate yeah, in yeah, the first absolutely. time you washed it. Yes. Um, the other thing is um, you don't always have to start at the very edge of the fabric. So avoiding the that very first couple of millimeters, just start a little bit further in, and that will stop it from wanting to ram it all down. Yeah, the absolutely. You. If you've got a five eight seam allowance, then mm -hmm. as long as your stitches start somewhere. In, in that, that five eight. eight, then your intersecting seam is still yeah. going to. Yeah, cut but they very it. often the the bit the machines don't like the most is the very edge of very curly jersey. So if you can avoid that and start just a little bit south of it, you'll be fine. Yes, absolutely. So the next thing is to do with when you're actually sewing. So the next couple of tips are to do with what happens to the fabric as you're sewing. So sometimes when you're sewing a particularly tricky fabric, it will actually start stretching it as you sew. Mm -hmm. So you end up with this ripply edge um, and that is to do with the presser foot pressure so I always have to say that slowly because pressure foot presser foot pressure presser foot pressure presser foot pressure presser foot pressure I can't say it but your presser foot pressure which is on more machines than I realized if you check your manual there's probably a screw that's towards the back or the side that if you turn it it will ease up the yeah. presser foot pressure. Obviously, you need to check your manual to find out whether you're supposed to turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise. Yeah. Um, but if you ease up on that pressure a little bit, it just means that the foot is not clamping quite so hard. It's not pushing the fabric down quite so hard against the feed dogs, and that means it's not going to be stretching it as it goes through mm. quite so much. So just try reducing that slightly if you can. And the last one is about your tension. Now we don't normally get you to fiddle with your tension very often. We usually just get you to leave it where it is. But if your stitches are coming through quite tight or quite puckery, then what you'll need to do is just reduce it down by one. You might not even notice that it's tuckering. It might look like it's gathering. Sometimes it yes. looks like it's gathering the fabric. So with mm. the presser foot pressure, it's stretching the fabric. Yeah. And with the, the tension, it's sometimes it's gathering it's the gathering fabric. Because it, it's, they're just make, it's just making everything just too tight. Yes. So only ever move it down by one and then have a little test. But all of these things you can do on little scraps before you actually go yes. into your garment. So get your stitches right before you even start sewing. I think that's the general rule with all of these tricky fabrics. It was yeah. the same with the plaid there it'd be the same with jersey it'd be the same with any of the other fabrics that we yeah. do um you always want to test on some scraps because then you can figure out exactly what it is that you're What's doing going wrong. and make yeah. sure they are scraps of the same fabric because they are yeah. all slightly different <laughs> so there's no point in you testing out a different jersey if yes. it's not the one that you're actually going to sew or try and cotton because that's not yes, what exactly. it's <laughs> the other thing that can cause that gathering sometimes whilst we're on that subject is yeah. the thread make sure it's definitely a polyester thread polyester's mm. got some give in it mm. um if you need to you can even switch to a nylon thread which will have even more give in it um, but trying to sew a cotton thread on a jersey it just doesn't have enough give and that's no. going to mean your stitches are too tight yes. and that's when you get that gathering happening as well. Mm. So that's it, that's our yeah. top 10. Yes, it's taking you through from getting your fabric out of the stash, picking your pa pattern, all the way through cutting, pinning, making solving any problems. Yeah, it's just sewing. So we hopefully hope, yeah, that we will hope get you covered everything. Get you to make your item and make it successful. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> now we need your help because we don't know what fabric to do next. So we've yeah. done pleather or faux leather, we've done tricky jerseys. What other tricky fabrics are you mm. sewing with? Which ones are making you cry at your machine? Yes. Which ones are making you shout and swear and <laughs> throw things across the room? Which ones we would are you love to come up with some top <laughs> 10 tips for yes. those fabrics. So comment below and let us know which top 10 tips you'd like us to do next and we will hopefully get that sorted for you very soon. We'll see you next time guys. Bye! Bye.